Welcome everybody. This is We Are In This Together Flow. So I know it might not seem <laughs> sometimes like we're all in this together. And though our reactions to being in this together might be different, we are indeed, at the end of the day, all in this together, experiencing it in our own ways. So I hope that we can move a little, find a little more compassion, a little less um, tension, and um, recognize that we're just human beings doing our best and feeling it and moving through in our own way. So join me in a child's pose, please. Reach the arms forward, reach the hips back. Just feel how lovely that feels to lengthen the body. And then with that, lengthen the breath. Inhale, rise up. Exhale, tuck your toes, downward dog. This is an opportunity to soften the neck. Pedal out the legs. Pass into your first plank and let it be real casual. Don't get scared of it. <laughs> Exhale, downward dog. Lower to the knees. Reach back, child's pose. Inhale, rising to all fours. Exhale, downward facing dog, soften the neck. And at this moment, while your heart is higher up than your brain, set your intention for today's practice. So let the contents of the heart, let the compassion of the heart spill into the thinking mind. Let the breath and the intention be number one. Everything else is secondary. Plank pose, not scary, you're strong. Downward dog. Lower to the knees. And you might place a blanket underneath the knees here, or a towel. From here, tap your right shoulder with your, excuse me, your left shoulder with your right hand. And then put the right hand down. Left hand to right shoulder, and down. Right hand to left knee. You can lift the knee or not, and down. Left hand to right knee, lift or not, and down. Downward facing dog. Deep breath in, big sigh out. All right, widen your stance a little bit and swish your hips really slowly side to side. Let's get into those hips, those glutes, IT band and hamstrings. That sounded like the name of the seven dwarfs. <laughs> oh no, uh-oh. Uh-oh, it started. Lower the knees. Shift back, childs. Roll the wrists around. Let's just lubricate those joints. Keep them real nice and healthy. And then come up to all fours. <clears throat> you can stay and do the same sequence in all fours, or if you want more challenge, go to plank. Right hand to the left shoulder, and down. Left hand to the right shoulder, and down. Right hand to the left knee, and down. Left hand to the right knee, and down. Downward dog. Don't worry if you toppled over there. Just come back to downward dog. Deep breath in. And out. Lower to the knees. Rise up to high kneeling. <clears throat> and then from here, bring your arms forward, palms facing down. Energetically press down and lift your heart at the same time. Not a back bend here, just letting your heart be buoyant. When you press down, you might feel that core engage, which is what we're looking for. Then keep that and hug your inner thighs a little closer together. So you've got this nice drawing to the midline and active through the trunk. Reach the arms up, elbows draw back, open your heart. Don't jut the chin up here. Inhale, reach up. Exhale, press down actively with the hands, lift the sternum, 
Reach the arms up, exhale, open your heart, open through the pectorals, work the back muscles. One more time, reach, press down, lift the heart. Arms reach, exhale, hands behind you in that wide open heart position, being the elbows to the sides. Stay here or take your hands to the waist or if you have more open shoulders, you can interlace the hands behind you. Wake up the inner thighs, lift the sternum a little bit more than you did before, and then open here. Modified camel pose. Neutralize the spine, float the arms up. Exhale, let the hands find the earth. Downward dog. Settle down through the thinking mind. We're all in this together. We're just doing the best we can as human beings. Same thing with whatever you do on the mat. Just do the best you can. Or even half-ass it, and it's better than nothing. <laughs> and then from here, walk your hands back to your feet. Take your fold. You can remove your blanket off to the side. Widen your feet. Swish a little side to side here. You might bend the knees a lot. And then from here, bend the knees, round the spine, and roll up. You're going to roll up with the feet wider than you might be used to. Shoulders eventually roll back a little bit, and then shake it all out. Make any adjustments to the clothes, to your hair, to your eyebrows, <laughs> whatever you need to adjust. And then come into a mountain pose with a sense of stability and calm and locate that in the breath. It's there, you just gotta find it sometimes. And then we're gonna work on that little bit of crossing the midline that we're using as a theme today. So it's really good for the brain and really good because it's not something we do very often in our daily lives. We kind of reach in this kind of the single line, right, instead of crossing. So from here, widen your stance just a little bit. It's just wider than sitting the distance apart. Shift your weight over into the right foot and then draw the right hand to the left knee. You can do whatever you want with the other hand, maybe the waist or maybe press back or maybe up. And then from here, we're just gonna switch sides. So shift, land, shift, and then cross left knee, excuse me, right knee to left hand. And then other side. I'm gonna start to swim uh, my arms back, up and over to meet back arm up and over to meet. You can bring that in if that feels like you have the coordination for that today or if it feels good on the shoulders. So we're getting a real full extension of the shoulder as we take our balance and cross the midline. This is also gonna get the heart rate up a little bit because we're moving a little quicker, balancing, this is this has got it all everything but the kitchen sink and then we're kind of come forward and hold for the twist other hand on the waist get long in the spine twist towards the bent knee and then maybe reach the opposite arm behind you and come back forward hug that knee in extend the leg any amount you could support it or not place it down Heel, then arch, then toes, and now press into a standing back bend where the back foot comes into a heel lift and you're rolling the heart open. If this works, stay here. If you want a little bit more of a standing back bend, soften your standing leg and lift so you'll be working that posterior chain more here. So not leaning into warrior three, but really a standing back bend. And then from here, we're gonna switch sides. The leg that's back is gonna be the knee that's forward. Left hand to right knee, right hand to the waist. And then maybe twisting towards the right, arm might reach back. And coming forward, hugging in and up. Any amount of extension of the right leg. Then that heel comes down, then arch, then toes, and then we're in that standing balance, opening the heart, maybe with the back leg lifting. It's like that scene in Titanic. I'm flying. I've never seen the Titanic, you guys. I've never, 
I mean, not the actual boat, but I've also never seen the movie Titanic. Shh. And then from here, mountain pose, top of your mat. Don't tell anybody. I'm going to be ostracized. <laughs> Inhale, reach up. Exhale, fold. Inhale, lengthen. Exhale, take it back into plank pose. All right, a little something different for plank here. We're going to cr cross. So I'm going to walk my left foot in a little bit towards the midline and cross my right ankle on top. Just breathing here. We're crossing the midline behind us, right? So in the back instead of the front. And then from here, other side. Just put the other leg on top. Cross your ankles. That's all I'm asking. Cross the ankles. We're doing it with the lower body instead of the upper body. And then from here, uncross. And downward facing dog. Sway the hips a little side to side again. All right, so we're gonna bring something in with a leg crossing, and it might make sense for you to watch me first and then join in. So I'm gonna cross my right ankle on top of my left, like I did before. Then I'm gonna lift that foot up a little bit, bring that knee over to my right elbow, and then I'm gonna cross underneath me with the right leg. Okay, other side. I'm gonna have my left leg on top, lift it up a little bit, and then cross it over underneath to my right elbow and underneath. So maybe joining in. Right leg is crossed on top. Lift it. Cross under you to the left elbow. Straighten and cross. Lift the left leg. Cross underneath you to the right elbow. And then full crossed legs. Lift. Under. Cross leg plank. Lift. Under. Cross leg plank. And you can do this where you just bend the knee and cross and you don't take your knee very far into the elbows. It's a lot of work, I know. Are your shoulders burning? Are your ears burning? I'm thinking about you. I'm, or what is that? If someone's thinking, no, that's if they're talking about you. Well, I'm not talking about you, except for the fact that you're great. Downward dog. Deep breath in and exhale lower let's find child's pose and let the shoulders soften so this child's pose might feel better to have those shoulders really release rolling off the rib cage and the palms up and then coming all the way up to sitting on the heels if sitting on the heels doesn't work you can grab a blanket or a block underneath you and breathing here All right, from here, reach the arms out and up. Similar to what we did in our standing twist, you're gonna take your right hand to your left knee and your left arm back. So this is the same thing, except we're not standing. And then go ahead and come back to center. Reach up. Now elbows draw back, open the chest. Reach up. Left hand to right knee, right arm back, twist. Feels really opening in through the spine and the back and the shoulders. Don't twist too far, just far enough that feels right. And then coming back to center, cross the right arm on top of the left. So as you can see, yes, it's a theme, we're crossing. Right wrist on top of left, right hand to left knee, left hand to right. Round in, round in, round in, hug, 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 tilt the pelvis towards the forehead. And then roll out, slide the hands back a little bit. Keep that cross, round in. And all the way up. We'll just change it a little bit. We're gonna take the top arm, which is the right hand, up, back, down, and around. And then the left hand, up, back, down, and around. Shoulders roll back, plant the fingertips, thumbs towards you, fingertips away, shoulders roll back. Here's another modified uh, camel pose. You can stay here, or as the sternum lifts, you can just, or you can breathe here, or you can come up here, or back to where you were, maybe the other fingertip on top. I'm tucking my toes under, because that helps me stabilize my patella, the kneecap. You choose what you want. Wakefulness in the inner thighs. Deep breath in. And sigh out, shake it out. All right, 
press the hands away from you. And then you can go even more towards the floor if you want. Let the hi hips hover near the heels, but not on top of them. Breathe here. If you need a blanket under the knees, add that. Breathe. Round through the abdomen, so you're rounding the spine in, holding that, but not holding the breath. You'll feel the core very, very active. And then we'll use some of that rounding and some of that core work as we place our hands down, lift our knees, and have an option for any of your crow or crane postures. I'm not going to go into a lot of explanation. You can choose any pose to put in this place. Lifting the heels high, hips high, X shape way high up onto the upper arms. There's a major weight shift forward of the head and the shoulders to allow what's behind us to lift. Then maybe hug all of that up and in. Finding your breathing. And coming on down, your favorite squat pose. So we went from more of a hero pose to now an externally rotated malasana. So toes and knees pointed in the same direction. Soften through the neck and the jaw. Optional rounding here, this time interlacing the fingers, rounding the spine, pressing the hands almost towards the floor at a diagonal opening. And then bringing a whole lot of strength into this. Be very careful, you don't have to do this. You can either come right here and press forward or even separate the hands. Or if you wanna really get into the work of the back as well as the hips, reach the arms up with or without the bind. Breathing here, scapula onto the back. And then lower the hands down, walk into your plank pose. From this plank pose, rock the heels forward and back without bobbing the hips up and down. And then see if you can roll this all around through the joints, through the toes, the ankles, the wrists, the shoulders, and then reverse that rotation. <laughs> so <clears throat> we're just allowing ourselves to sway and shimmy and move in postures we sometimes just hold on to. So we can maybe take that, go to a downward dog, we can maybe take that into our lives where it's like sometimes we stand steadfast and we have to kind of feel like we're fighting for our, our, um, what our standpoint is. But you can still have that standpoint and let other people have their standpoint too, right? So kind of being able to shift around, be a little bit more flexible and go with that flow. Take your feet to your hands. Rise halfway up. Exhale any amount of a fold. And then come all the way to standing, however it feels best to you. And bring your hands to your heart. All right. From here, soften the knees, soften the shoulders, shimmy it out, do your, do your normal thing, your jazz hands that you do all the time. And then bend your knees. Is that just, did I do that? Is that just me? Bend your knees and step your left foot back. All right, so depending on how far apart your feet are, it's gonna change whether what degree of bend you're in in that back knee. Um, I want you to feel safe in the knees and strong in the legs, okay? So go ahead and bend that back knee to hovering. Now, if that doesn't work for you, come into a lunge or just bend it a little bit. Breathe here and then optional reach or interlacing like you did before possibly of the fingertips here. Breathing, so we're holding the posture, drape the tail a little bit, working the quads, opening the front of the hip. Breathing here, you can do it, soften the neck and jaw. And then from here, we're gonna tilt forward, straightening the back leg into a pressing lunge. We're pressing with the interlaced hands or extended fingertips if the hands aren't interlaced. And going back, bending the knee, torso is long, straightening, and reaching forward, hands and sternum, active back leg. Last one, hover and lift, and then reaching forward. And we're gonna swim it back into a chair pose. So the legs will go into chair, and the arms will swim back behind us, palms facing in. Active through the triceps, plug the fingertips back. Hug an invisible block behind you and get into the lats and the triceps a lot. <laughs> and it might help to put a smile on your face <laughs> and fake it till you make it. 
Fingertips almost come down, then we'll inhale up, come to standing, and bring your hands to your heart. Optional flow, if you're not taking, excuse me, optional vinyasa, if you're not taking that, come to a child's pose or downward dog, catch your breath, inhale. Exhale to the fold. Inhale halfway up. And find your way back through whichever option isn't necessarily the option that you want, it's the option you need. Go with what you need over what you want and you'll generally feel better. Add your breath. All right, from here, <clears throat> Look to the front of your mat and take your feet there. Bend your knees, round the spine, roll up. Restack into your alignment, restack into that feeling of being really solid in yourself and in your breath. All right, so remember when we come into this that that back knee can bend a little or a lot. It's really up to you. So we're just gonna come to it from here. So bend the knees, shift your weight over into your left foot and step your right leg back, okay? And then again, adjust accordingly. You're gonna wanna, gonna wanna separate your feet a little wider possibly. Bend that back knee. Once that's set up and you feel safe, maybe reach up or interlace the other finger on top. Go for that hold. So this is really strengthening. It's a lot of hard work, but if you've got the, the breath underneath the work, you're good. And now we'll go for the reaching forward extension of the back leg. Back to the bend, high up with the chest. Extension and reach. And bend and lift and go for that extension and reach. Now from here, we'll step forward into chair, swim the arms back, shoulder blades onto the back, plug in with the fingertips here, and we'll change it a bit. Reach the torso now onto the thighs, turn the palms facing up, loop the shoulder blades back onto the back, and then plug your fingers as actively back as you can. Optional lift of the heels. A lot of quad stuff today. This is making me wish that I didn't do a bunch of weights with quad work yesterday. Trembling, inhale, exhale, heels down, fingertips down. Rise halfway up, exhale, fold, step or hop back, find your plank pose, and then make a really good decision for yourself if a vinyasa comes next, or if not, Breathing here, steady. Find a pace that works. Slow down your thoughts a little bit just by slowing down the breath. And then from here, walk your hands back to your feet. Choose how you wanna rise. And come all the way up to stand. Hands to the heart. And then shake it out. Again, make any adjustments that are gonna take you out of the practice. And we're gonna cross the midline again. So you might wanna to turn towards me if you're not already, I'm gonna to turn towards you. And <clears throat> we'll come into some options for our eagle pose where we're, we are crossing the legs. So lift one knee, cross, and then tap those toes down to the other side of your lower foot and bring your hands to your heart. Breathe here. So this is option one. And then if you want, bend the standing leg and you might have to cross a little higher and join here. Then whichever leg you have on top is the arm that goes underneath, maybe the back of the hands touch, maybe the front of the hands touch. If you're going for a different wrapping of the lower leg, you can. I'm gonna stay here because my knees are a little tender. And then you have the option to take any amount of a fold, hugging the core musculature back, drawing the organs towards the spine. And when I say core, I mean the front of the core. There's a whole, I won't get into it, but you get me. <laughs> and then from here, we're gonna unwind and slowly step into an X shape. Unwind, open X. 
Good. Exhale, fold hands to the ankles or the shins. Soften the neck. Find any amount of bend in the knees. Inhale, reverse, come all the way up into that X shape. And then hands to the heart, feet towards one another. Soften the knees. Balancing other side, other knee lifts that didn't lift before. Cross, set down, just the toes are down. You can stay exactly here and work the balance for today or begin to bend that lower leg and maybe even with the assistance of the hands, cross a little higher up on the leg. Whichever leg on, on top, that other arm's underneath. And then maybe coming forward. So this is eagle pose. And I always think of this as like the eagle is leaning over and feeding the baby eagles. And I said in yoga class one time, like <laughs> that would mean we're like vomiting our eagle food into baby's mouth. What a pretty visual. <laughs> and open it up on ah, nature. Exhale, fold. Maybe I should keep my thoughts to myself. <laughs> Bend the knees any amount. Come all the way up. X shape and mountain. Deep breath comes in. Shake it on out. All right. Widen the feet and come into a goddess squat. So take your time getting here. This is not a pose you just hang out in during your daily life. So let's be really careful finding our way there. Hips higher than the knees, please. And then we're gonna find the slowest molasses movement of the hips up and down. Just really, really slow. And then you can keep the hands on the thighs or you can reach them to the sides, palms up or down. You choose. And then if you wanna work the brain a little bit differently, take one arm alongside of your ear and then switch other arm alongside of your ear, other arm out. We're just changing things up, doing some asymmetry. And then both arms up, elbows draw back, open the heart, not to the extent that you're over back bending, still lower and lifting, lifting and lowering slowly. And then press everything straight, reach up, turn your heels back, and then exhale, you're gonna take a lateral stretch over to the right. You can take the lower hand on the waist, you can reach it across, or go into the core and hug in by reaching up, into the, up and over, both arms. Inhale, center, exhale, hands to the heart. Soften the shoulders, soften the neck and jaw. Inhale for the reach. And then here's where you make the choice that you need, <laughs> not necessarily the choice that you want. What do you need more of? Place it in your practice. Trust yourself. Back to center. Elbows draw back. Woo. And then we're gonna take the arms to the side. So you just put the scapula on your back and now you're taking your forearms to the sides, hands to the side, squeeze in. Let out a little bit and squeeze in. Whew, working that back body. So instead of pulsing with the hips now, we're pulsing with the arms, shoulder blades, waking up through the paraspinal muscles, through all of that beautiful work of the back that sometimes we forget about. We're so focused on what's in front of us and strengthening that, we forget the back. And then press the hands ever so slightly back and then float the arms down, good. And then release that out. Ooh. And then step the feet in a little bit and you're just gonna round and sway a little side to side. So we were so structured, right, before. Now we're just whew, easy going, very, very liquidy, very flowy. Soften it out. And then roll all the way back up and shake that on out. Classic lunge coming up to the top of the mat. From here, bring your hands to your waist, bend your knees, step one leg back. Find it in your hips, pelvis, heart, they all feel like they're in the right spot. And then from here, bring your hands to your heart center. We're gonna twist again towards the front knee. So again, that crossing the midline twist, you can stay here or right if, you're, if your left leg is forward, your right elbow inside or outside of your left knee for your twist. 
And then possibly binding. So if you are not used to binding, don't listen to anything I'm saying about binding right now. <laughs> <laughs> okay, only do it if that's part of your practice. Make sure your neck is happy wherever you're looking. Plug in that back femur head into the pelvis. And then really slowly, we'll unwind to the floor. Tent your fingertips, hop your back foot a little closer in, and then lengthen your spine and fold any amount. Yeah, so I think having a good mood <laughs> and feeling open towards other people's viewpoints <laughs> is easier when your hips and hamstrings are in heart or a little more open. And lungs. Back to a low lunge, followed by a plank, followed by vinyasa. Downward dog, stepping or hopping front of your mat. Take your time with your breath. Come all the way to meet me at standing. And there's where we'll join. Deep breath in. Let go of the overworking mind. Let go of the overworking body. And we'll step back into our high lunge. Hands to the waist, whichever leg you didn't step back last time, steps back. You're gonna feel nice and grounded here. Take your time setting that up. When you do have that, hands to the heart. Get long in the spine with an inhalation. Exhale, twisting towards the front knee. If this is feeling great on the front of your hip and you wanna stay nice and tall, do that. If you're coming for the twist, taking that, maybe using the elbow, and then possibly using a bind. I'm gonna do a video on this particular bind some other binds, but this one in particular. So stay tuned. <laughs> and look down at the floor, unwind back, step back. And then what do you need? Vinyasa or not, maybe you need a big old child's pose here. And just finding your breath. And then from here, rising up, if you know how to jump through, you can do that. If you want to work on the core a little bit, but you can't jump through, tent your fingertips, lift up, tuck your toes. And then from here, lift your knees and hug the core back as you walk your hands back and bring the legs forward. If you want to work a little harder than that, then you'll put your hands down, lift, round towards your knees, and then maybe tiptoe the legs through to the point they can get to, hands back, and then legs forward. There's all sorts of way to, ways to get there. It's just, we're gonna get there. <laughs> Shake it out, point your toes forward, open the ankles, press through your heels, spread the toes out wide. All right, hands are going to be your option on this one. So internally rotated, kind of in between, externally rotated. What do you need in the shoulders when you're lifting your weight up? Bend the feet, bend the feet, bend your knees, feet to the floor. Find the hand position that works for your shoulders, wrists and elbows. Roll the shoulder blades onto the back, lift your chest. You might stay right here. So sometimes when we lift the chest, we wanna splay the knees out. Keep the inner thighs gently active. And then rising up, maybe here, maybe a little bit more, maybe a little bit more. The higher the hips go, the more you'll feel this as a stretch at that head of the shoulder. Breathing here. Recognize what's touching the earth. Reach down into it a little bit more, waking up the hips and hamstrings. Breathing. So it doesn't feel good for me to send my head back. If you like to send your head back, do it. I mean, if it feels right, <laughs> not as if you like it. And inhale, exhale, lower a little bit down. Inhale, lower a little bit more down. Inhale, and exhale all the way down. Hands underneath the thighs, little bit of a boat pose here with some support or release that support. Breathing here, letting that back body really come into play here and support you. This isn't just the front of the core. All right. And then from here, feet come down, 
hands come down, remember it's your position that works, shoulders roll back. Stay here or lift any amount. All right, so you know we did that cross position business a bunch in this practice, right? So we're gonna play along and maybe do some here. You might find better balance if you turn your hands out for this one and the hips lower a little bit. From here, just give it a shot, see what happens. Take your right hand to your left knee and then come on back down. Resettle and then left hand to right knee and come on back down. All right, from here, this is really, really weird. You're gonna take underneath you right hand to left toes and back. Who surprised you on that one, right? Left hand, right toes, and back. <laughs> Lift up. If you want to go even further with this, fingertips might turn forward, reach your legs forward, reach your hips up, full Provodhanasana. This is a very active hard pose. And exhale slowly, slowly, slowly. Come on down. Cross at the ankles and then just do a little lean forward. So a little stretch, a little elongation and full breathing. If it feels good to follow your breath and come a little bit more forward, opening into the hips and spine, feel free to do that. Inhale, come all the way up. Cross the other leg in front. Sit up nice and tall on the inhale and maybe it's just a little lean or maybe it's a bigger lean. It's all about, are you getting a stretch and are you still breathing? You're good, all right? That's where you need to be. If those two things are happening, you feel safe, that's it. Let your breath paint your hips. We're all in this together. I don't usually meet, you know, uh, people with super, super open hips. If I do, that's very rare and we have to work on hugging in a little bit more, but most of us can understand a tight hip day. <laughs> Leaning back, bring the legs forward, shake it out. All right, and then from here, feet down, a little bit more of that spinal work, really good posture, opening that chest, and then we're gonna cross the midline again. <laughs> just for funsies. Cross, lift your left shin and touch your right toes. No, if, you, if this is your left shin, these aren't your right toes. Touch your left toes with your right hand, okay? Now you can grab onto that maybe. You can lean back like this, or you can extend and maybe extend the back arm. So it's up to you what feels right. Shoulders roll back, leg lifts. If you want to then lean back a little bit and extend up and lift that other foot, you can maybe extend the other leg. What? And then bend, bend the knee, come on back, have a little rest. Reach the legs forward, either tabletop or Purvottanasana. Let's open the hip flexors before we go to the other side where we're scrunching them up. And then lower the body down. That's what it's called, a body. <laughs> and then from here, other side. So I'm gonna do a, that was a break dancing move from the 80s if you didn't know. <laughs> so I can show you on this side, open your heart. All right, so remember, you're gonna lift through the right shin, maybe, Find the right toes, that might be it. Maybe lean back. Possible extension and extension right here in this twist, slight balance, and then maybe lifting the other leg. You can even open here by grabbing your toe differently. And then set it all down and rest. And then bring the legs forward. Hands come behind you in whatever position feels good. We're going back for an opening in the front of the hips and then we're gonna change it up a little bit. Lift it up here. You, you're like, yeah, we're all in this together. We're all in this weirdo business you're teaching us, lady. <laughs> yeah, 
<laughs> All right, well, it's about to get weirder. Walk your left foot into the midline a little bit more. And like you did when you were in eagle pose, cross your right leg over. Good. Now you might stay there or start to roll that over to the floor, unwind your lower leg, and now cross the lower leg on top. Roll that to the side, slide your lower leg out, cross. Lean the knees to the side, foot lands. Cr underneath you, unwind the leg, cross. So it's very, very weird. You might feel your obliques, you'll probably feel your shoulders as you always lead with the lower leg unwinding and then crossing on top. Lean, unwind, cross on top. And that's about enough of that. Lift up. <laughs> Maybe send the head back now if it's ready. And then slowly come back in. Cross the legs. Flesh of the sitting bones moves back. Inhale. And exhale any amount of a fold. For those of you who have really more open hips and it takes more for you to feel the tension to get into that, cross the leg that's in front on top, engage at the ankles, and reach it forward. Lifting up, lean back, and switch which leg is on top or in front. Maybe you're sitting up tall, maybe it's a lean forward. So, whatever feels stagnant or held in the mind, break it up with the breath. So imagine that it can just be slowly moved through and dissolved with the breath. Again, that doesn't mean letting go of what you believe or your beliefs. It means letting go of anything that's so stagnant and hard and it's actually doing you a disservice and preventing you from opening your mind to compassion or thoughtfulness, right? Because we sometimes get stuck in that bubble. Inhale, come all the way up and bring the legs forward shake them out all right from here take your right shin forward and your left shin back so i'm going to show you from the side here that in doing this i don't want the knee and heel together but rather the back hip and knee kind of come straight out to the side and you'll be mostly on that right sitting bone so you're going to sit up tall there and then twist away from the feet any amount. And you can play with how you're rocking on that pelvis or tucking the tailbone a little bit to extend a little bit more through the hip flexors. It's a very, very kind of awkward um, posture that isn't quite a pigeon pose. And then unwind, and if you can, put your fingertips back behind you and see if you can just roll over the feet and shift right so the other leg is now in front twisting away from the feet and then coming back to center bring the feet in front of you not as far apart and just lean back and we'll do that in a much more of a lackadaisical manner Externally rotating one while the other internally rotates. Back and forth. And then from here, option to do a lift. So this is an arm balance of sorts. We don't see it very often, but it takes this shape and brings it into a lift. If you have a couple of books or blocks, it's going to make this much easier for you. And if you haven't seen my how to lift up with your hands video, that one or the arm balance one would be really helpful um, if this doesn't uh, kind of work today. So one of your blocks or books is gonna go right in between the legs, okay? The other one is going to come to that right hip. So if your right leg is forward, it comes right to the side of the right hip. And then, Practice on your next exhale, bringing from the sternum to the low ribs to the pubic bone, that whole diamond shape back towards your spine, okay? So that's what you're lifting, not just the belly button. That's drawing in and up. And think that you're doing a little bit of a rounding here, okay, rather than opening your heart. 
all that is going to lift, we're all in this together, all that's going to lift are our knees. Some of our feet are going to stay on the ground, some parts of the feet. So press into your blocks, inhale, and as you exhale, just lift, lift the knees, keep the right, or keep the um, side of both foot feet down, and come on down. So that's the outside of your right foot and the inside of your left. Okay, so that was that. If nothing lifted but you still worked your core, great, okay? It might help you on this one to take the feet, a excuse me, the legs a little closer together. And on this one, we're gonna see anything else might lift. Who knows? This is really good for the outer hip strength, okay? You might feel this tomorrow. Inhale, press down into the box. Exhale, draw that diamond shape back. Lean forward a little bit and see what will lift. And then set it all down. Ooh, obliques much, outer hip much. Shake it out. Move your blocks to the side. Slowly bring the leg that was in back forward. Let that be the front leg. And we're going to go back into the stretch where we lean any amount forward because now we want to stretch that out. Free the neck, free the breathing. Inhale, come all the way up. All right. Left, uh, other side, left shin forward, right leg back. One block between the legs or book. Other one to the outside of the left hip, close to you. All right, not on the high heights. Stay away from those, okay? <laughs> Instead of being in this together, you'll be in a lot of other stuff. Uh, namely, you'll be in deep doo-doo because these are very wobbly <laughs> and not secure when they're that high. All right. So we're gonna draw that diamond shape back. We're gonna lean a little bit forward. We're gonna press down, recognize that we're stronger than we think we are and just lift the knees, but keep some of the feet down. Inhale, exhale, lift, 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 lean forward and come on back and roll the wrists. I have to do this weird popping in my uh, thumbs. Okay, maybe take the legs a little closer together. We're just kind of condensing ourselves in a little bit. And then uh, maybe the feet will lift. Inhale, exhale, press down, lean in, see what will lift. Hold and come on down, shake it out. Move your blocks away from you and then lean to one side, cross the other leg either on top or forward. Give it a little lean and give it lots of breath, lots of patience. Breathing here. So you don't want to overwhelm when you have just done this major condensing and constricting. You don't want to then drop into your biggest opening. You want to ease into it. Baby steps. That's um, what about Bob? Baby steps to the bathroom, baby <laughs> Inhale, come all the way up and shake it out. If you're not as old as me, you might not get that reference, and that's okay. Bring the legs out. Now, I am gonna bring a blanket in. For me, I find it so useful to take my hips higher <clears throat> up on these, especially extended leg positions, and then take the flesh of my sitting bones and move it back to just minimally tilt my pelvis a little more forward so that the pelvis isn't going back while the spine is trying to come forward, but rather the pelvis is going forward and so is the spine. So put some engagement into the legs. Add your breath. Add your sweetest dedication to yourself. And know that if you never, ever, ever can do the splits, who cares, <laughs> right? I can't do the splits, I can do like the, uh, the, the long way splits, kind of, can never do these. Just breathing. So what we're looking for is not planting our face on the ground, not doing full splits. What we're looking for is stretch within reason, where we're not burdening the body by actually doing too much, but rather giving to the body sweetly and slowly to the degree that it's still safe and beneficial. Follow your breath with the inhale to lengthen. Exhale, you can fold any amount. Maybe you're right up here breathing. Great, you probably don't do this pose every day. <laughs> it makes sense that you might be up here. No, no problem. 
and then we'll go for a little bit of a lateral like we did earlier and you get to choose what feels best. So if you want more strengthening, you're gonna choose the choice, which is a lean here, okay? If you want a little more stretching, you're going to choose either grabbing the foot, reaching over, or lower arm reaches across, upper arm reaches over, or maybe it looks like this, or maybe hand down and just little sideways, okay? So lots of options here, what do you need? Sometimes it takes kind of exploring to find out what you need. You don't know right off the bat. Be willing to explore, be willing to throw your plans out the window. And then we'll fold a little bit towards that leg, walk back to center, and walk all the way up. Other side, what do you need? So this is my tighter side. Notice how I went to my looser side first. Mm -mm -mm, bad yogi. And then finding a stretch that feels okay. Yeah, my left side's much more open than my right. So again, gonna play with it here. What arm position feels right? Where is my breath? How can I shift and change this over time? If you went to your tighter side second like I did, let's stay a little longer so that we can get a little more stretch on this side because obviously we need a little more stretch on this side. And then fold any amount in or just face that leg a little bit. And come back any amount of fold in the center. And all the way up. Very carefully bring the legs in. You can use your hands here and make any adjustments and shake that out. Move her the toe, move her, move her the toes around, you know, how we move her. And then come to a comfortable seated position. All right, from here, we're gonna move into some breath work. So my favorite breath work is alternate nostril breathing, Nadi Shodhana. I did not believe <laughs> in this for a long time. And now I really believe in it. So it's, it's kind of that same way as and we're all in it together. We're all in this together. Think of all the times when you shifted your perspective or you learned something new or something changed or you walked around in someone else's shoes for a little while and then you said, oh, I understand them more. Doesn't mean you have to agree with them, but I understand them more. Anyway, that's sort of what happened with my breathing. I didn't understand it until I really started to kind of live it and do it and now I'm like, aha. Anyway, shut up, right? Right hand, thumb to the right nostril. You can use any of your other fingers to close off the left nostril when you're ready. I'm gonna use my ring finger. Inhale through the left nostril, close your eyes. Seal off the left nostril, open the right, exhale. Inhale through the right. Close it, exhale through the left. Slow down, inhale left. Open the right one, exhale. Inhale right. Exhale left. Soften the shoulder blades. Inhale left. Exhale right. In right. Out left. Hands onto the thighs, sit up tall. Come into Samavriti, which is even inhale, even exhale. If you need a little bit more energy, you can have a longer inhale than exhale. If you need a little bit more grounding and calm, elongate the exhale. And in this moment, just recognizing and marinating on the idea that as humans, we are more alike than we are different. We all feel love, and happiness, and pain, and discomfort. We feel confusion. Sometimes we feel totally steady and stable. But we've all been in all of those realms. 
May we recognize that wholeheartedly and come into the mantra that you are health on all levels. And in order to be health on all levels or healthy on all levels, we have to look at our mindset. And instead of getting cluttered and thinking that there is only one way, recognize that your way might be perfect for you and not right for someone else. And that's okay. And then one more word to add in, which I hope that you will take with you for the rest of your day and maybe the rest of your week and hopefully the rest of your life. If we're all lucky, we could do this. The word is grace. Finding grace to be open, grace to understand, and grace to forgive. The forgiveness not only of other people, but forgiving ourselves and moving forward better. Better than we were a minute before. Bring your hands together to your heart. Step inside of yourself and inside of the depth of your heart and find your grace and move it along your breath so that the grace moves into every single cell of your body, even your brain cells, all of your heart cells, all of the blood cells, everywhere. Come on down onto your back body. If you want to use your blanket and set it up for under the knees, feel free to do that. Lay on down, take a full body stretch, and then very carefully draw back into center, rock a little side to side. And then your very favorite twist happens next. Oh. <laughs> You might want to move that blanket out of the way while you take that twist. Letting what can open, open because of your decision to make these shapes and your decision to find this breath. And slowly to the twist on the all the other side. Breath is number one. Intention is right with the breath and everything else is secondary. Back to center. Hug it in. If there's any movement in the hips that feels good or if there's any stretching finally that you wanna do in the hamstrings, you'll add that on. Kind of make this your own time where based on how the body feels, you just provide what's needed. And then optional little lift of the pelvis. And then if you have a block, you might place that underneath for a supported bridge, nice and low, nice and soft. Just giving some extension to those hip flexors that worked so hard for us today. Slowing down. You can stay there or shift into your Shavasana. Again, maybe that blanket underneath the knees. Laying the weight of the body down and knowing that you are completely supported by the earth beneath you. Stay here as long as you can. <laughs> After all, when we relax, when we take care of ourselves, when we rest, we don't feel as burnt out 
we usually feel a little healthier. We felt like we poured in so that we can eventually have something to pour out. I want to thank you for being in this community, for showing up, for practicing on days when maybe you don't even feel like it and you almost have to convince yourself to start, just for starting, for trusting me and for all of your beautiful comments and for your support, especially if you do subscribe and like, that's some great support too. I hope you have a beautiful day. Namaste, everyone.